In this trainer's tip, I will talk about how to assess physiological load. This tip will be the first of four. We will look at visceral, hormonal, limbic, emotional, and musculoskeletal. Let's begin with visceral. The visceral system is composed of your internal organs. Many people in the exercise and even the healthcare professions do not realize that the internal organs are actually an older system than the musculoskeletal system and that the musculoskeletal system came later in the evolution of species. If you look backwards in the biological tree, for example, you'll still find creatures that do not have bones, such as sharks, jellyfish, and others, octopuses, for example. So, again, if you look at the biological tree and follow it all the way backwards, you can get to the point where all living organisms on the planet were single-celled organisms, and within a single cell, you have what are called organelles. Within each organelle, within each single cell, is an organelle that corresponds to one of your internal organs. The way the body developed over time was that the nerve endings, the nervous system that feeds the organ, is actually much more involved in regulating physiology, things like pH balance. The sympathetic nervous system that you have intervening your musculoskeletal system, which is used to control blood flow in the musculoskeletal system, also innervates your viscera, your internal organs, and the sympathetic chain ganglia, the nerve ganglia that run along the spine, they regulate blood flow into and out of the internal organs. The sympathetic chain ganglia are also the pathway by which the internal organs get their sensory nerve endings. The result of that neurological construct is that whenever an organ is in a state of inflammation, pain, or pathology, it is very rare for the person to feel that pain in the organ until late and terminal stages, such as when someone's about to die of cancer. But in the meantime, you can feel the dysfunction in the musculoskeletal system because the nerve endings that give pain sensation to the musculoskeletal system are actually the same ones that the visceral system uses to communicate its pain. For example, you all know that when someone's about to have a heart attack, they get pain in their left arm and left chest, which when coupled with shortness of breath, triggers the physician to immediately investigate the function of the heart. Many of the women watching will have had many instances of pain in the low back during menstruation or when they're premenstrual. That is another viscerosomatic reflex. So the heart reflexes to the left arm and chest. The uterus often reflexes to the low back. The appendix, for example, will reflex to the lower right quadrant of the abdomen, the liver to the upper right, the stomach to the upper left, sigmoid colon to the lower left, the kidneys to their respective low back, etc. These are all common visceral referrals into the musculoskeletal system and they're very, very well mapped. Why this is important to you is that as an exercise or healthcare professional, it's very likely that you will have a patient come to you that has musculoskeletal pain, yet they cannot identify the cause of the pain. Lo and behold, 85% of all orthopedic pathology is what is referred to as idiopathic, which means the patient does not know what happened. They just know they woke up one day and all of a sudden they started to hurt. Underlying this phenomenon is the fact that visceral pathology at the functional level, which means you have not yet developed a disease, is referring the pain into the musculoskeletal system, particularly into the muscles because the muscles have the greatest capacity to absorb neurological energy being highly biologically active tissue. So when the organ is in stress to diminish the stress in the nervous and hormonal systems, the pain is referred into muscles which becomes spasmodic, which absorbs the pain and the energy out of the organ. The word disease literally means dis-ease, too much energy. So if you look at my book, for example, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, I show you through a series of questionnaires how to identify when people have internal problems. And in my book, I show you the relationship between the organ and the musculoskeletal system.
As a tip for you, I would highly recommend that before you exercise any new client, you get a hold of a functional medicine questionnaire or a health appraisal questionnaire, such as the one you can get out of my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, and look carefully at the correlation between the health of the internal organs and the corresponding muscles and joints. It is only through an integration of the internal organ systems with the musculoskeletal systems and the other systems that I will discuss in upcoming trainer tips that you can actually determine your client's readiness for exercise.